Viros, and the secret of arsenical copper. In the heart of present-day Transylvania, during the Wittenberg culture as archaeologists refer to it today, lived a family of craftsmen renowned for the tools and weapons they produced. The head of the family was a tall, well-meaning man, handsome yet very stern, some might even say harsh. Together with his wife, they had three children, a daughter and two sons, but his wife passed away early, leaving the three children orphaned. They lived on the edge of a large forest, far from others, and besides crafting tools, they engaged in various activities to earn their livelihood. They tended sheep, goats, not just their own, but also for others in the village. They made dairy products, chopped wood, and did many other tasks. They were doing reasonably well, largely thanks to their hard-working children. The children were very industrious. They feared their father and worked harder than many adults. The eldest son, Viros, among other responsibilities, was in charge of finding copper, which was not easy because their area was not rich in copper resources. But he knew where to look and would bring it home. They also had twelve horses, which eased their work and which Viros loved dearly. One day, Viros returned home joyfully. Father, I want to tell you something important. What happened? Did something happen with the horses? Yes and no. It's about one of the horses. One of the twelve, the one with the black tail, keeps wandering off, always grazing in a different spot. And why is that important? Horses will be horses. Sometimes they wander off. Yes, but listen. I noticed it always grazes in a specific place, so I went to see why it likes that place so much. There, I found something different. What did you find? Or, but not like the usual copper we know. It had a different color. I brought some pieces home and melted them. And what did you discover? It's harder and more resilient than our usual copper. I made a tool from it, and it's much better. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Show me the tool you made from it. Vero's father tested the tool on a log. It was an axe made from that new ore, and indeed, it seemed much better than anything they had made before. Where did you find this ore? You must show me. Let's see if we can get more from there. Sure, father. Come with me tomorrow morning, and I'll show you the place. Fine. If this ore is truly better, we'll have to work even harder to extract it. Don't think you're special just because you found something. It's just luck. Yes, Father, I understand. I just want things to be better for all of us. Empty words. Leave the sentimentality. Get to work, Viros. We don't have time to waste on stories. He went to rest, and Viros and his brother went to work as usual. The next morning, Father and Viros set off together to the place where Viros had found the unusual ore. With eyes carefully scanning the ground, Viros led his father to the hill. Where the horse with the black tail grazed separately from the others. Is this where you found the ore? Yes, father. Look right here. The father began to dig with his large and powerful hands, pulling pieces of ore from the ground. After collecting a considerable amount, they returned home to continue their experiment. Once home, they melted the ore in an improvised furnace, much like Viros did when he first found this new ore. Viros carefully observed as the ore transformed into a liquid metal with a unique gleam. As they roasted and melted the ore, they noticed it had a lower melting point and was much easier to work with than pure copper. It proved to be easier to process, and the resulting metal was much better than pure copper. Over time, it also proved to be more durable. In the months that followed, the family continued to extract and process the new ore. With the help of arsenical copper, their tools and weapons became highly sought after in the region. Trade flourished, and the family's wealth grew considerably. People in the village and surrounding areas began to know and respect them for their craftsmanship and the quality of their products. However, despite the prosperity, which was largely due to Viros. The father remained as harsh and unforgiving as ever towards his children. Viros, on the other hand, began to dream of something else. When he wasn't busy with the hard work of metalworking, 
he often retreated to the stable of horses, where he felt truly free and prepared for a better future. He continued to work hard, but his heart was now filled with hope and dreams. He enjoyed working. It was only the cruelty of his father that was difficult to bear. His horses, who had witnessed the discovery that changed the family's life, provided him with the only solace. With each passing day, Viros hoped more and more that their future, his and his brothers, would be different from the life they had lived alongside their father, and that one day they would pursue their dreams far from his shadow. The story is based on a true event, but is largely fictionalized. Historical truths include the following. The use of arsenical copper was an important step in the technological development of prehistoric societies, prior to the widespread adoption of bronze, the alloy of copper and tin. In prehistoric times, copper naturally containing arsenic was used to produce an alloy known as arsenical copper, which was harder and more resistant than pure copper. This alloy preceded bronze and was utilized in various regions before the discovery of tin usage. Arsenical copper has a lower melting point than pure copper, making it easier to cast and work with. 